So about five, six years ago, I was diagnosed with type 2 bipolar and ADHD. Um, and a lot of you guys probably are familiar with ADHD. You're probably not as familiar with type 2 bipolar. Normal bipolar, you know, type 1 bipolar, uh, is highs and lows, really high highs, really low lows, and it's rapid cycling, so it goes really fast. What I have, type 2, is just milder. The highs aren't nearly as high, the lows are, aren't as bad either. Uh, and for me, at least, the cycles were significantly more elongated. Um, typically what it looked like for me is that I would have this kind of really long downward uh, sloping towards depression and in here it'd get kind of crippling. And then I'd have like one day where I'd get really excited about things, I'd stay up for like two or three days with not very much sleep, and I just have tons of great ideas and uh, I just have so much energy and, and just be super, super, super productive. And then I taper off and then start going down and down and down. And when I would get down to here, then I could just barely get out of bed in the morning. And I had a lot of days when uh, I just couldn't get out, uh, out of bed until like 2 o'clock or so. And this is really what it felt like. And this is a verse in the Bible that says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. Instead, that which I hate, I do. And it's one of the worst parts about depression is because there's no obvious physical ailment. And so you just assume that the reason why you're not doing the things you want to do is because you're a lazy bastard, or because you're not trying hard enough, or because you don't want to catch it. Um, and, and I think that this has been one of the best parts about finally getting diagnosed, which I did. Uh, I, I figured out that I had ADD, and I went to see a counselor about it, um, and she said, you definitely have ADD, but I think you might also have type 2 bipolar. And I was like, well, I'll take the ADD, and you can keep the bipolar, <laughs> uh, that's what crazy people have, and I'm clearly not that. Um, and it took me about two years. The ADD meds helped a lot, I still take those. Um, and, but it took me about two years, the depression remained, and eventually, about four years ago, I got on the Motrogen, which I take every morning, it's just a mood stabilizer, and I've been so fortunate, because I've been remarkably stable ever since. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people with bipolar are nearly as lucky. It's estimated that about 4 to 5% of the population has bipolar. About 10 to 25% of people who have it die from it. And about 1 in 3 people who have bipolar will attempt suicide. Um, I was actually today supposed to talk to you guys about fantasy football and genetic algorithms. Uh, about 4 weeks ago we had our first table talks. And that was going to be a really fun talk because when you talk about genetic algorithms you get to say things like, and then the two football teams have sex with one another. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, right as people started coming in last uh, four weeks ago today, I was back on my desk checking my email, and I got an email from a developer of ours, his name is Caleb, uh, and he just said, hey, I'm not feeling real well today. Uh, and he had sent an email to everyone on the team, but he sent me a personal email that just said, uh, you know, it's been a rough couple of days. And he and I had talked about my bipolar, and we had talked off to the side, and and he said, you know, I think that's something that I have to. I just noticed some of the similarities in his behaviors that I had been doing before I got treated. And uh, he set up an appointment with a psychiatrist. Um, and he set it up for Friday. He set it up for uh, the day after. Uh, so, you know, the Friday after. Um, and unfortunately, we found out now that he never really made it. Um, he sent me an email the next day on Friday. I introduced him to my friend Brian, who had the same thing that I have. Uh, and he had a remarkably similar story. And Caleb wrote us both back and just said, uh, Brian, it's nice to meet you. I have my first appointment today with a psychiatrist. I'm really looking forward to finally solving some of these things that have completely confused me throughout my life. Uh, he died the next day of what we're almost certain was an unintentional drug overdose. So there's no, we're, we don't think it's suicide. But I'm quite certain that he died because he was self-medicating uh, an undiagnosed mental illness. Um, and this is why I want to talk to you guys about this today, because I really think that this is something that affects the developer community, and it's not something that anyone talks about. It's something that affects the greater community, the greater population at large. But if you look at some of the symptoms of bipolar and depression, there are a lot of symptoms that really fit the stereotypes that a lot of people think of developers. Um, there are, we know for sure that depression correlates highly with uh, with increased intelligence. Uh, a lot of developers will have racing thoughts, or people with bipolar have racing thoughts, and they just have so many ideas flooding in their head. Uh, those thoughts try to get out through the small hole in your mouth, and it comes out as pressured speech, long speech with no interruption. 
Um, they have the ability to hyper-focus on things. During those periods of hypomania for me, I would just work on stuff for 15, 16 hours at a time. Grandiosity, thinking that the rules don't apply to you, thinking that you can solve problems that other people can't solve. Um, irregular sleep, it's not uncommon to have uh, onset insomnia where you can't fall asleep at night and you can't wake up till the afternoon. Uh, and then of course social isolation, which is common with everyone who's depressed. Um, we know that people who are depressed, uh, there are studies at least that show that people who are depressed tend to have a more accurate perception of reality. We don't know if being depressed causes you to see the world more clearly or if seeing the world more clearly causes you to be depressed. But uh, it certainly seems that there's some sort of correlation between the two things. Uh, one of the first projects I ever worked on here was with the Naomi and Ruth Cohen Foundation. Uh, Naomi Cohen was 30 years old. She had bipolar and she committed suicide. And her parents set up this foundation solely for the purpose not of curing mental illness, but simply destigmatizing mental illness. Um, if you had a broken leg, then we would tell you, go see the doctor. If you have uh, diabetes, we say take insulin. Uh, if you have breast cancer, we say get on chemo. But anytime somebody has a mental issue, there's this stigma in our society that says you need to try harder. You need to stop being lazy. You want to want it more. And we'll send somebody to seek medical treatment for every other organ that's below the neck. But for some reason, we seem to forget the fact that the brain is the most complicated organ in your body. And it's just as much susceptible to the biochemical conditions of your body as everything else. Um, so the purpose of this talk, I just want people to know that if you're struggling with this, or if you know someone who is, talk to someone. I'm up here, you can talk to me. Ultimately, I'm not a professional. This guy is. Um, and he's a psychiatrist. I have a list of a dozen more if anyone wants to talk to anyone about it. Um, but I really think that we need to just be more aware of this in the Belgium community, because people are really suffering with this, and people are dying from it. And it's not something we really talk about a whole lot.